Hi everyone and welcome back and let's uh, finish our auth service which we started in our in our previous video. This video is part of Uber Eats clone playlist series. Okay. So what we were doing, we actually baselined our application. We have a Docker container running. Now there is a choice I'm giving you that sometimes what happens is you should be able to run the Node.js without container also because I can run, it's easier for easier for me to debug and restart the application quickly without even Docker. So some sometimes people, what they do is they keep uh, this Postgres running in the Docker itself, but I can remove it. That is just for my development purpose. I can remove this Node.js from here. And what I will do is I will just do Docker compose up. What it will give me, uh, it will spin up the container. Docker compose up, I need to go into packages and then auth service. Okay, so it will just keep the Postgres container up and running. We can see here auth service node, we don't need it. Here we can just check the log, currently it's running, but you can kill it. That's on you. I just want to kill it for now, just like remove. It will remove this container and we have only postgres okay so now as we have only postgres container up and running what we can do is we need to change our database url because now we our host is going to talk to the container right so we will just change it to the local host and now the port will also change because on the host we have to access 5434 not 5432 okay this is in the dot env now we need to write our code how we can start our node.js server so we can just do is npm run start i guess uh, we, oh, sorry. i'm going to auth service whenever i switch to a new terminal so it's doing the same what is happening here is it is running the migration so where it is looking for the migration it is looking for the migrations inside the ormconfig.ts right so this is our ormconfig.ts here it is checking for the database url it is running the migration so we are good okay uh, i mean that is a, a code error because we haven't we don't have a core module we will just remove it and our application will start working as it is so these are the migrations and then npm run start next start our, our application is running now we are able to just run the postgres as a container node.js we can do here we can do a lot of things like you can uh, create a debug port and npm run dev npm run watch all those commands here what we are doing is npm run start but you can also start the nest.js server in the debug mode using dash dash debug okay start dev will keep watching like say if i do npm run start dev so it will also keep checking for the file changes happening in your code base. Whenever you change anything, it will restart, right? That's good for our development purpose. Now let's come here and start writing our code. First of all, we're going to write our database module. And then we'll add some migrations and all sort of things we're going to do. Okay, so for the database module, uh, we are inside database we create a database service we will create a db.module.ts first let's create a config because config is the module which will populate the config in the whole application so here we will create a config service.ts config module.ts and some interface config.default variables config.interface.es okay so this is the whole application interface right so what we are going to define is in the config default there's a config default inside this we are going to define define all the default values of our environment variables if you are not able to find them anywhere 
default config we will define the type for this like uh, let's say the config data this type we are going to define inside interface export interface config data and here we are going to define all our types okay i'm going to put env which is going to be of type string in my environment i mean there are many ways to have these config service you can just use the config service provided by nestjs nestjs config and it will put all the things from your dot env to process dot env because that is the thing we want and the db because we are just using only these three configuration config database this is another type i'm creating config database so here we'll create export interface uh, config data so uh, database config and what we are going to have inside database config is just a ur config database and just a url because everything we are going to put inside the the url okay config database here we have one value you can put a number of things let's say in your application you also have a swagger you have a some external apis so here i will just say config swagger i will create a type and inside config swagger i am putting two variables sport interface and here i have a username i mean you wanted to protect your swagger interface swagger documents this is a config swagger and log levels and all these things also you can add which is of type string okay this is my config data and this is of type config data and now we are going to define the default values so env the default value is uh, production if you are not specifying anything database in the db we have defined i think two things two values identifier expected this config data we have to import this is of type config data and config data we already defined add import and the db is we have one variable here url so it's we are going to get this from process.env dot uh, database url this is the default value and why it is complaining you know there are a couple of more values we need to declare the url and then there is a i think swagger here is, there are two properties username password and i mean those are the only required things we have there is i think log level also there Default config there is a port which is of type number so this is also we can get from env or the default if you want to set 3001 was it inside config was of type number or string let's see port was of type number so here we need to parse it process.env.port will be a string so what we will do is, even if this is undefined we will have the numeric value and then just part our class name this is my config service and then what this config service will do is this config service you will inject at a lot of different places to feed the config data here and there here we have a constructor here you can inject the default config and this is my private config value i'm going to write a class uh, that will give us the config data so it has a constructor and this config data config data okay what this constructor will do is this will initialize our config with the default data 
this data is of my config data is initialized with default config we are good and this dot config equal to data so this is how we initialized our config with the default value now what we can do is we can populate the different values from process.env so load from this is a kind of function we are going to write and what this function will do is it will populate the config from this dot parts config and here you will pass the env which is of type uh, node.js node.js dot uh, let's fix this this should be node.js dot process env this is actually a type env something like this env also has a type and what this is going to give us this is going to give us the config data this is my own service i mean i could have used nasjs config for that but this service is also doing the same thing here this dot config i will populate the config from here which we are already doing so this function should return a config data this dot config will equal to this dot parse config from env so here okay i'm calling this function sorry for that process dot env and this function we need to write this is the function which will return us whatever we need and this is the private function to we'll make it little secure because only this can be called internally from this class and here what it is going to return it's all the different things what we need process.env and we need to pass the environment also and this will just return the config data i will explain what it is going to do right so what it should return because here we are saying is this dot config is of type config data it should return it so what all things we need env so env you can get from env dot not env if you don't get it then you can access it from the default default config dot there is also we have env similarly provide all the other things port either you already have defined inside the env so we use parse int so you will get from the env which is process.env env.port which you will get from here and db so you can write a separate function for it let's say I will deal with that separately and then we have what swagger you can define a separate function for it also so let's say we can write another function is this dot okay so we are going to just write the function this dot parse swagger, swagger config and here this dot parse db config and pass the env so we'll just pass our default env and the config these are the two arguments if you have everything anything from the env otherwise just pass the, the default config also inside this default config dot db here also you can pass default config dot swagger and we define these methods what else is missing swagger env port log level is missing so log level we can define this we can get from env dot env dot log level uh, it should be in uppercase uh, 
okay parse tv config here define these methods private parse tv config and there is another method is private parse regular config what these methods should return that's the same thing parse db config will return the database configurations from this parse db config should return this we are passing two arguments here env which is uh, node.js dot process env that is the first argument and second argument is the default config for config is of type you can also set read only because we are not going to modify it read only config data so default config dot url okay this default config should be of type because we have defined a type here is config database config data config database we import the config database also that is the interface okay so we are done with this similarly i can just copy this it should be quicker so here it is a parse swagger config and here is its uh, username and the interface here will be config interface config swagger we are passing from here you see default config dot swagger so the type will be config swagger and default config dot uh, username env dot here we can just uh, check what will be this env value swagger dot username with this value i will populate the value inside a proc process dot env and this is a password Swagger username, so it should be a password, and instead of this, it will be a password. Config swagger we need to import. That's it. So it's like a config service, and then finally we also need to write a function. This dot get static function. I mean just a getter method, public get, and this is going to return us the read only config data. config data and what it will do is it's going to return this dot config so what you need to do, call this function get function on the instance of this config service and you need to call the get function to get the config object then you can do dot uh, database dot swagger dot log level this is a simple config service we have written okay if you're not passing the value then it will use the default config default from the default config it will load the values from this okay so what we need to do is this is a config service ready we can just write a config module that is simple now what the config module will do config module will uh, here we are going to write a factory so this is how you write a module this is our module okay inside module what we are doing is do we are are we importing anything imports empty we are not having any dependency controllers what happened with that why it's not auto importing things import module from next js common controllers empty providers we may have the services defined and then the exports we can define that okay so this is our simple module and we will put the class for it i mean in the next yes either you write a controller service or a module you have to have a class with these annotations annotation module annotation controller annotation injectable uh, we have a config Port class config module okay 
Now the important part here is we are going to create a factory. So const config factory. What this factory will do? This factory will provide a class. So because this is a service, right? There are three different or four, five different ways to declare a service inside a module. Either we just provide a pro, put a providers and inside providers just put the name, right? Here we are doing a, a provide. And what we are providing, we are providing config service, which is we have created. And this is going to call use factory. const config equal to new config service this is how we can get the instance of that service and then config dot load from env this we are going to call and what it is going to return is config so why i did that you might be wondering what is the use of this here i will put that in the providers and i will put that in the export doing here we got the instance of it and then we are calling load from env what this load from env is doing it explicitly putting things from the process.env to this config object otherwise i mean we can keep we can just use this uh service without using factory also inside the providers let's say i'm not doing this and i just put a config service config service what will happen is yes it is still providing the config service instance but we are not calling anything right that, that instance doesn't have any value any configuration only the default configuration from the constructor but uh, otherwise what you need to do is you need to first call this method after getting the instance and then use this config that's why it's better if we call this method by ourselves and just return the config to the end customer who is going to use this config module that's why what we are doing is we created a config factory we are providing the config service and that config service re is returning this so we call this method this method will put things inside a config and we are returning from this so this is our config service you will understand it how we are using it inside a database module okay you might be say, thinking uh, am i doing a lot of things here i mean am i over engineering this thing so if you don't want to use this, there are other better options. I'm not saying there are better options, but like Next.js config. What you can do is you just create a config module, just a simple plain config module. And then what you simply do is just create an env and just do it. Config module dot for root. What it will do is you will have a dot env file in that you will have all these configuration username password and all it will put them in the process.env directly and then wherever you want to use the these values you will do is process.env database host database port database url because we are just using inbuilt provided config module or in this particular case we wrote our own config module but that's on you you can just write config module dot for root or there are other variants of it you can just explicitly pass the env file name also based on maybe the environment or something like that config module dot for root here then this is how you will access the values from process dot env okay so there are different variants of uh, using this you can also pass a file name and from the file name it will load the configuration in our case we are doing kind of a similar thing reading it from the process.env and providing that through the some class instance okay now uh, database so inside database we are going to have database service database module and db interface for database also i am going to do a little bit over engineering otherwise what you can do is simply typo rm i am going to write a database module which you can use everywhere this is how you can do it you can write a data source from typo rm and just write this database providers and then use it like this database providers and this is becomes your total database module you can use it anywhere you want right 
here you write the entities and then this is how you will create your different providers photo repositories use repository and you will get the data source from type ORM get repositories I mean there are many ways of doing it what I will do is no, uh, there is a warning. Yes, I mean uh, that that's true. Either you write your own database module, which I'm going to do. Otherwise, what you can do is you can just use this database provider and start using this. Okay, we will talk about all these parameters you are passing here. I'm going to use just a URL which contains the host name, port, everything. And you will pass the entity synchronized true false all sort of configurations so let's talk about database interface okay so here in the database module what all the things you need you need to pass type host port username and all these things that means a connection url we have only single property that is url and then you need to pass the directory of all the entities this is how the type ORM module will be initialized entities directory where you are defining user.entities.ts profile.entities.ts whatever the dot ts right these are three three main arguments this is the connection url entities and the synchronized flag which can be true and false so let's define our interface in the database interface i'm just going to import things from the type rm And here export interface db config. Inside db config, I'm going to have entities. With entities, I need to feed to uh, the type ORM. So here I'm going to use connection options coming from type ORM, and these are entities. What happened with this? Connection options does exist. Okay, let's find that one just a warning. This this entities we need to pass from wherever we are initializing the type or module. So let's write our database module. And this is going to be interesting, right? So here this is our database module export class uh, db module and inside this we are going to lo do a lot of things before that this is the js module right so we will import the next js module inside this what we are going to define all our classes this is going to be a dynamic module this because we are we will be injecting the config module to provide us the connection urls and all sort of things we are going to do inside this particular module so first of all what we are going to do is uh, maybe this is little bit on stuff but you might have seen this kind of a thing in the nest CS, how to write the dynamic module in the nest CS. here i'm going to override this for root method this for root method will take db config as an input it'll be a simple db config okay and here what this module is going to return this module is going to return the class this is db module and what all we are going to import here imports so inside imports we are going to use type orm module type orm module why it's not coming up type our module and we are going to call that let's import it oh it's undefined that's strange so we can uh, first define this import type our module from nextjs type our and i'm going to import type our module now it got it so there are different methods provided by this module for root for root async so i'm going to call for root async and this will take an object as an input because this is a dynamic module so here we are going to import whatever is needed imports 
because this module is dependent on other modules so because we have a config module somewhere defined and let's say config module only for now so here we are going to use use factory here i'm going to pass config service initially it looks like okay what complex thing i'm writing but this is how you write uh, this is how you write a dynamic module return and here i'm going to do is db module i'm going to write a one method inside this class is get connection options private static this method we are going to call from here db module dot get connection options and inside this method i'm going to pass the config service instance of config service and after this what all we are going to inject is the config service inside this so it's like a dynamic module i have created and inside that i am using this config module and config service i'm injecting inside this because i'm importing config module so i can access the config service inside a, this module so get connection option here inside a connection option i'm passing config service config service okay and what this uh, particular method should return type orm connection options type orm module options because here we are initializing the type orm module let me just bring it down so you can get the full view and here inside this method this method is important here we are going to get the data from the config const const db data equal to config dot get get is a method there and from that i can access db that has everything if i don't get this data that means you didn't provide the connection option if you didn't pass the db data that means you can just throw new throw for now throw error we will define the custom errors for it otherwise we'll just create a connection option connection options equal to now we can write this module class for all different kind of database okay so here we are going to call it this dot get connection options postgres let's say because postgres is the database we are using db data and we can define this method private static get connection options postgres otherwise what you can do is you can also pass the dialect or database type based on that you can write a custom method so the get connection option of mongodb mysql postgres and what we are going to return from this is the configuration values okay what it should return is here we are passing db data of type config db data config database right uh, this is url we have so what we are going to type return from this is type is postgres you need to pass this to the type orm url is db data dot url keep connection alive all these options are also there i guess keep connection alive true it should return type or module options We keep connection alive and here ssl because when we use it on the production environment ssl is required right otherwise so if let's say particular condition is process dot env if our environment is local or test we don't need uh, we will just return reject unauthorized false otherwise we need ssl true this is really critical because sometimes your locally postgres is working fine but on production it is not working because that has ssl enabled and you need to pass 
SSL true. Okay, so what we are doing is SSL if this environment is not local and not test, unauthorized false, otherwise SSL false. Or there may be a condition where your production database has SSL enabled. Okay, so now we need to we are returning this and then from here we can return the whole thing. We got the connection options from here. Connection options. What else we are adding? Entities which we were passing here inside a config. Okay, get connection options. Okay, here we need to pass this DB config also. So we can pass all the entity classes. It will take two arguments. DB config and it will be DB config dot all the entities, entity, all the TypeScript classes, synchronization. Why it's not enabled with the TypeScript? Type or module options. You can see these all things you need to add inside this. Type or module options. I'm just looking at the, the TypeScript definitions. What all things you can return from this? So synchronize, synchronize and logging. Synchronization means we will talk about this parameter. It will always synchronize your entities with the database tables and logging. It will just log the SQL queries. It is running. That connection of everything is inside a URL and then SSL. Okay, so this is pretty much with our database class. I mean database module imports module imports here we have a controllers we don't have any controllers we'll just keep this empty and any providers we can create any service if we have and if you are if you are exporting those services like i'm going to create a data so this is pretty much our database module this is the database module service so what we need to do is now in the main module we need to call the for root function to initialize the type or module okay type or module dot for root async we are injecting config module and then getting the type orm connection objects from the config service and the db config okay so now how to use this we have a database module we might have we'll create a database service so how to use all sort of things inside our main module so we are going to create a domain module where we are going to import all our uh, modules which we have created so we are going to create a domain module here inside this this is the domain module so how do we use all the modules we have created so inside imports we will import a db module let's say db module it provides method for root okay for root and what is the argument it takes if you see for root is taking the entities so this is how i will add the database module to my uh, main module because in main module you will add the database module config module and all these options so here i will add the config module what happened with this why this auto complete is not working this is the import okay here it will be config module will come here so we have just only two modules but there will be a logger module config module and then all the user module we are going to add so controller i think controller we already have we will add the authentication routes here and inside domain we will also have the user modules so we can create that our user module where we are going to add the user apis so let's see how it is working okay 
we are getting this type of rm connection errors because what is happening in the database module entities are empty let's see what is happening here so this is our app module inside app module we are passing domain module domain module has a database module and the config module so this config module injecting the url now we'll go to go inside a config service database url this is the environment variable it is looking for okay so how we are passing database module the database url there is no way right here it is looking for enu.database url otherwise default config.url that is also dependent on process.enu.database url so what you can do either you export all these values inside process.env or use .env module so we can use .env .config inside our main.ts on the top what it will do is you have a .env which i guess i have it will put all these values inside the process.env so that our values gets populated so here is a port is this now we will run this again what will happen this time is i just added this line dot env config it will populate the values and it will put all those things inside the process.env once process.env has the values our database module will have a con will get the url through the config service using process database url which is already there in the process.env and we get the the url in our database module this is our database module you can also print the the values you are getting here inside this we will add the logger but for now console.log db data db config and db data are empty and the url is postgres api auth api that's why our type orm connection is successful so we added a config module to populate things from the .env to process.env database module to based on the database type there may be another variable you can add inside env type and then you can use this db module as a global module and here you write a switch case okay get the connection option of for postgres for mysql for mongodb based on type and return the same options because type orm options are similar like synchronization false if you make it true will happen is it will start creating the tables and let's add the entities how we are passing the entities through the domain module which is here let's say i'm creating one entity and i can look for some example example here of entity from this class so inside app domain auth So let's because auth will not have an entity, user will have an entity. So I'm going to create user dot. It's still not a user, but for now, just for a demo, I'm going to show you user entity and think there is a parameter name. Or it will take the user as a name, but you can also define the name of your table. Okay, let's say this is the user. And I'm going to import this entity here user okay so what will happen is now i'm passing the user entity class user and this and we need to check our database because here what i'm doing is synchronization true that means if the entity is there and database table doesn't have it then it should it will try to create that table in the database so let's me populate my postgres So this is my connection URL and I'm using one tool for that. Let me connect with that and we will see if the table has been created or not. Postgres from URL. And this is my tool. And you can see the user table has been created. Similarly, you keep adding the different entities, user entity, I'm just showing for the demo for now. 
let's say profile dot ts profile dot entity dot ts oh i need to rename it otherwise there will be an error so it's a new entity right synchronization is true so it should create now this should be two tables let's refresh it oh did i change anything i need to import it here also i forgot that and here is the magic will happen and we'll have a two tables okay that's it so rest let's take a look in next video what we have done till now is database module config module how to populate the pro uh, environment in the process.env how to write a database module how to initialize the type ORM module to accept the connections and these uh, parameters like passing the entities to initialize and what is the synchronization option with the type ORM.